All right, so a moment ago we were looking at uh, search results. We were searching basic keywords and long tail keywords. Well, you might not have an idea of what your long tail keywords are. So before my company takes on any SEO project with a client, we do step zero. We set up a basic foundation with some things before jumping into editing the website or writing the content or rewriting the content. We do some basic things beforehand. We need to educate ourselves about the client and the client needs to also know as much about themselves as possible. So I'm going to give you a handout here. You can fill it out. Uh, it's not going to be an assignment where you turn in and I'll grade you on it. I'm going to give it to you. We're going to talk about it. I'm going to explain it as much as I can and then you can fill it out and I can check it if you'd like. Again, my printer is not quite working so you can fill it out digitally here. But let me explain to you. This is the, com the client company profile. Basically, we're going to follow the adage, know thyself. We are going to, you are going to know more about your company, things about that perhaps you didn't know. So let me show you here. We're going to go back to the network folder. I just added something there. Go back to your desktop. Open up computer. In the computer window, you will see the classroom data Network Drive Z, down here, double-click Classroom Data. Scroll down to my folder of Campus SEO. Open the Campus SEO folder. And then drag a copy from my folder to yours. PMD Interactive Client Company Profile, drag it over to your desktop. And then we'll open it up and we'll look at it together. Let's copy this over. This is something we do for, for real for clients. This is us learning as much as we can about a client and also for the client to know about themselves because once we know these things it helps us better craft the long tail keywords it later helps us craft a marketing strategy so let's go ahead and open that and let's look at it so it's just two pages long the first page is just a cover page where you would be filling in your company name this is your company profile your name today's date the reason for that is because it could change. As you go through this course and you learn more concepts, maybe you go back and edit this and have a new version of it. So there's page one, page two. Here's some uh, sections to answer. Let me go through them and I'll give you insights and examples and caveats. Company name. What is the name of your company? Why did you choose the name? Does it have a special meaning or story? For example, my web design company, my fictional web design company is Vic.co, pronounced Vic.co, and it comes from my name. So maybe you're, you've, you've got a name for your company, great, write it down. But maybe take one sentence to also write, why did you choose that name? That will help us a little bit later when we have to deal with writing our about us content or filling in our social media profile content or fleshing out our Yelp profile or LinkedIn and so forth. The more you know about yourself and the company, the better you create a brand, the more content you create, and really content is king. It's not about the tricks, it's not about what kind of graphics and design of your site and other tricks, it's about the content of your site. That's what people are searching for. So explain a little bit about your company name. Tagline. Think of one sentence that helps people understand what your company is about. Think of some famous taglines. I'm loving it. It's in the game. Just do it. Why do they stick? Your tagline could also be a concise statement about your company if its name is not immediately understandable. So if you've got a company with an esoteric name like PMD Interactive, what do they do? Well, the subtitle, the tagline is, you know, the perfect web design company for your perfect website. You know, something that explains in one sentence what your company is, especially if the name of your company is not literal. 
we all know what Nike is nowadays, but in the 70s when it was created, Nike, oh, that's the goddess of war or speed, victory. So they, what's their company about? Well, just do it and all of their taglines and so forth. So the same thing. What sort of one sentence tagline best defines your company? And maybe at this point you don't quite have an idea of that, no problem. You're going to be researching, thinking about this, asking other people in your company, interested parties. But of course be careful of design by committee. If everyone has an opinion, everyone will give an opinion. If everyone has the ability to op opine, everyone will opine, and therefore your tagline will now be a paragraph long. So there's always the final say. So here, a great company for your great website. PMD Interactive. How about us? Write a paragraph about your company. Who founded it? What is it about? When did you get the idea for it? Where was it founded? Why are you in this business? How will you make the company a success? Notice these are the classic who, why, what, when, where, why, and how. The classic, those classic journalistic questions. So I would recommend answer each of those. One sentence each is fine. You're going to craft then from that a paragraph, and that's going to be relevant later when we talk about your website, that if you don't have an About Us page, you need one. And this helps you craft that. Having an About Us page is important, because it helps build authority for your site. Authority is important. Your website needs to look professional, needs to have professional content, needs to have authority. Your website needs to look like it knows what it's talking about so that the search engines rank you better than that one that looks low quality, that has no content, that has not been updated. So answering these questions on your about page goes toward that. Yes. All the dialogue you put in here is the content that's uh, going to be relevant to that long tail. Yes. And it ties in. It does. The we picked up from there. It it does. Yeah. So all of this stuff, all this content that you're putting on your website, the search engines will crawl your whole website, find these keywords, this long tail keywords, all throughout your site, and that helps you then get ranked. So that's why we're going to be thinking about writing all of this stuff, because the more of our content we put out there to the search engines, the better. Mission statement. Write something that lets potential customers know what's in it for them. Why would they hire you? For example, Vic.co exists to bring the most beautiful web design to the most discerning clients in Southern California. Our designs will make everyone take notice. Mission statement. This is something that a lot of companies have. What's their mission for existing? Why are they in this business? And again, I keep saying business and company and so forth, but this works for your nonprofit. The mission of my nonprofit organization is to build awareness of the plight of whatever. Uh, I'm trying to get hired, so my mission, the mission of my company is to create the best Con, uh, the best websites for the right price to, for customers. So it's basically the goal of your online presence, your mission statement. You can get examples and inspiration from every company out there. Quick detour. McDonald's.com if we poke around in just about every website, big, medium, small, somewhere we're going to find something about a mission statement or values, history, somewhere we'll find a mission statement. I'm not going to dig too deep but there's going to be a mission statement somewhere at McDonald's, at Whole Foods, at San Diego Community College, at PM the Interactive. Every website is going to have a mission statement, and if yours doesn't, 
it's helpful for you to have one. Because again, this is all about your long tail keywords, about your content. Values. What are some keywords that your company believes in? For example, orderliness, teamwork, discipline, efficiency, creativity. And there's a list here. So these that we look at here. If you follow that link, physical values, cleanliness, orderliness, organizational values, standardization, integration, psychological, excellence, customer delight, creativity, harmony. So we are writing some keywords, some values, some things that your company believes in, the people behind your company, so that will inform other aspects of our online presence. If I'm writing, Vic.co exists to bring the most beautiful web design. No, that's a mission statement. Values. If I'm writing about that my company believes in efficiency and creativity, teamwork, and so forth, and that's readily apparent and available on my online presence, my website, my social media, and then potential customers see those values that they also believe in, they might be more prone to hire me. So this is an aspect of marketing. Promoting your website in a more emotional level, not just the, the literal product and how this product that you buy will make your house warmer, it traps heat better, but that my company believes in the happiness of a home and the connections between family members and that sort of thing. So that goes toward people in an emotional level that could help entice people to hire us, buy our product, etc. And again, get inspiration from all of the companies that you that you that you know or or like. If I browse around somewhere on our site here. Uh, we'll be able to find that. Let's see, organization. Mission. To provide ongoing learning opportunities, preparing diverse individuals for career advancement, a college education, or enrich lives through good health and personal fulfillment. I believe in good health. I'll take a class here. So maybe this should be flipped, actually. Think about values first, and that might help you then write about your mission statement. Personality. Think of your company as a person. How would he or she communicate? How would he or she behave? For example, Vic.co's communication is spontaneous and friendly. Vic.co is happy to, take, to talk to new clients and share the latest in web design. So again, putting a personal face on a company. This helps to create a connection with potential and current clients. This is an aspect of, of marketing. This helps um, when we get to SEM, search engine marketing, to, to tweet, to post on Pinterest, to make YouTube videos. This helps create a personality and a style. Love them or hate them, you know, McDonald's is one of the biggest companies in the world, making billions of dollars. Their current ad campaign I kind of like. It's Have you seen those commercials? I think it's the Better Together or something like that, where it's got this uh, these cartoons of these characters that would normally be at each other's throats, but then with McDonald's they come together and have a great time. There's a dragon fighting a knight, and then they share a, they share a Big Mac, they're friends. There's Batman and the Joker and they're fighting, but they share McNuggets, they're friends. So they've created this personality in their current advertising, very playful, cartoony, pop culture referential. So here you're going to think about how is your company like a person so that that will help you later when we talk about social media. 
And then, of course, just some fundamental information. What's your company's address, your website, e email contact, and any social media profiles that already exist. You may also list social media pro profiles you will like to set up in the future. You know, you put your address there, phone number of the company, uh, your Facebook address, and then maybe make a note. Well, I want to get into this, this thing that they call Instagram, so write some of that down. But these are fundamental contact information about your company. Any questions on uh, this document? Or these concepts? Again, you don't need to fill this in and turn it in for a grade. You can fill it in and I'll check it out and give you advice on it. But these are things you need to start to think about that you might not have thought about. You thought, well, I'll just add some keywords to my site. But if you don't know what those keywords are, if you don't have a, a story or a persona crafted, you might be spending more time necessary. Um, so it's good to set up foundations. How do you copy this? If you, uh, if you got it from the folder, all you need to do then is drag it to your desktop, and then you can have a copy of it that you can edit. Now, that is a, um, like I said, an early step that we would do with a, with a client. Another early step is that we would do um, competitor research. We would see what other companies are in this space, what other companies is our new client also competing with? What are the other needles in this haystack? So I have, an, uh, I have a handout for you as well there. Let me put it in the folder. So go back to the SEO folder and I've added a handout called back to the folder and I've got a new document there called Campos SEO 1 Longtail Strategy. So copy that over from that folder, drag it to your desktop, and take a look at it. So copy that over. Long tail strategy document. This is this competitor research. It's also helping us to figure out our long tail keywords because we're going to find out. This is the keyword that I was going to try to be found by and I'm finding that other people are also a lot of other people are using it so at the top nowadays search engines don't rank your site very well unless you have good content it's not just about just keywords anymore you're not going to be found when people search for Italian restaurants you will have a better chance of being found from authentic Italian food in Chula Vista so it's about the long tail of keywords if you understand your niche better you'll be able to potentially rank better in this activity, you'll define your long tail keywords. So I often have to couch everything that we talk about in this class, this class with qualifiers such as you may get this result, or this will improve your results, or this is a possibility. I cannot say this will work because everyone is different. Everyone is trying to compete with other categories, different categories. So my company never says we're gonna get great results in a month in three months we're gonna say we're gonna go build this 
foundation. It's an ongoing process. You will see results as time goes on. And they ask, how much time? We say, well, we'll, 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 we'll regroup and touch base and evaluate in three months. And then we'll see how we're doing and how we can improve. So everything that I'm talking about, well, you also you always need to think about that, that this, if we follow these things exactly for one student, perfect. In a month, we're number one. And for you, it's been two and a half months, and you're still number 10, but at least you used to be number 40. You know, it takes time and, and effort. And so I've got a section here, the old way and the new way. This is what we touched on earlier, and we're not, we're not going to do a lot of time on this together. This is something for you to, to do because it's your site. But I've got here, you're going to go to a search engine. You're going to go to both search engines, Google and Bing. You're going to search with simple keywords of your topic or category or niche, simple ones, not really detailed ones. Maybe web design, maybe affordable web design. That's okay, but don't get super detailed yet. You're going to search for basic keywords first, and you're going to see the results that appear, and you're going to check out some of these results. Yes, you are going to be clicking on your competitor's website, but that's in order for you to research their website. You're going to avoid the results that are in the paid section. Italian restaurant. You're going to ignore the suggestion. You're going to ignore the ads. Um, I see a Carabas Italian grill. I found a result. What I'm going to do is, what I would suggest for you is, let's open a Word document and write some notes. You can write it on paper, but let's go to the Start menu and search Word. Let's go to Start and launch the, launch the software Word, or whatever Word processor you have, whatever note-taking software you have. I'm going to launch Word and make some notes. I'm going to use a blank document. What my project here is saying. For the first page of results, write the title and, and description for each of the sites. Click on the results and write notes about what each page features. For example, when was it updated? Does it have a blog? Is the design modern? Is the site mobile friendly? What do you like about it? What don't you like about it? So we are just sort of researching the competition. Any thing you want to write is valid. Your positive or negative impressions, something that you grudgingly think that's a good idea. Because then we can incorporate it in our own site with our own spin. So what I'm saying is, okay, Carabas Grill, Carabas Italian Grill. What I'm going to do just to save some typing, you can select that text and copy it. And then in Word, you can right-click and select the option right here, keep text only. That way it won't come in with the big font and the colors and all of that extra ornamentation. I just want the text. So I've copied from the result, and I'm right-clicking, paste text only. That's one of the competitors I'm going to research. Because here I've read, that's their title, the title of their page. Their web address, their address doesn't list anything about Italian food. It's the name of, I don't know, Grandma Caraba from the old country. So notice that, it doesn't need the name Italian, the word Italian in the, in the title. And then this description. We're going to be talking about editing and writing all of this stuff next time, of course, once you've got your login. But I'm checking here. Caravas offers flavorful, handmade Italian dishes. Prepare to order in a lively something. You may have, what does that say? You may have a short wait 
once you arrive at the restaurant while we prepare, and then it's cut off. But the concepts here, even though I didn't search for handmade, now that I see it, that might entice me to click that. Flavorful. Lively. So my research is I'm going to see some results of competitors, and I will click to view their site so that then I can have a critical a critical eye toward their site. You'll have to, for the moment, put aside your jealousy that they're number one and you're not, and you're going to look at what does their site have? What do I like about it? What don't I like about it? Number one, what I'm seeing is it pops up to ask for my location. So it wants to ask me um, what my location is so maybe it can show me a map. That might be useful. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make some notes here. Whatever impressions. Asks for location right away. Just some notes. Allow. I'm scrolling down. Okay, now that I'm seeing it a little bit more, I, I don't think I've heard of them before, but now that I'm seeing, it looks like they're part of a larger chain. Because on the corner I'm seeing here, from Bloomin' Brands, Inc. So it looks like they're a large chain, they're, they're a large corporation of restaurants with, with smaller chains. So I'll make a note of that. Uh, seems to be part of a large corporation. What I see also is that when I first load the page, I have a very large graphic that takes over the screen that entices me with deliciously priced at $12.99. So a very big graphic, eye-catching graphic. Large eye-catching graphic with an ad. It's advertising to me right away. $12.99. I see a menu at the very top. Our story. Amici Club. Catering. Gift cards. Order online. Hmm, they have an order online system. I scroll down. I'm seeing a lot of beautiful photos, mouth-watering photos. If I'm a restaurant and I have most of these things, but one of the things that I don't have are great photos, that's bad. I'm seeing that with the competition, great photos really help a restaurant. People want to see good-looking food. It works. One of the clients that I'll be talking about uh, we've got a couple of restaurant clients, and one of them, the owner tells us, every time we post on Facebook one of our one of our amazing, delicious photos, that item suddenly gets a spike in sales that week. Because people do see that and are enticed and go to the restaurant and buy it, because it's a great photo. And restaurants, uh, especially the chain ones, definitely have researched decades of user psychology. If you notice, you go to a restaurant that has, you know, it's a menu, and it's a bunch of options, and studies show that people often buy the meal that has a photo as opposed to the meal that doesn't. And the meal that has a photo might be more expensive than the one that doesn't have a photo. I know I've done it. I look at a menu full of 40 items, and I look at a nice-looking photo. That looks good. I buy it. And maybe something similar was lower down without a picture, slightly cheaper. So there's a lot of psychological aspects of marketing. So here, mouth-watering photos. Obviously, whatever your product is, a good photo also helps. What is this thing I'm looking at right there? Twitter. This is a tweet. Social media. I'm seeing social media is front and center. And that's also a customer testimonial. So I could go on. 
but yeah, this site, I'm, I'm looking at it and it's really nice, it's enticing, and it's really well designed, and uh, it seems to work well for their brand. Question? How did you see when it was last updated? Look around, and if you see any sort of date, that might be an indicator. On the copyright notice way down here, I see 2014. Maybe it hasn't been very recently updated, but because of other factors, like maybe they're very active on Facebook or Twitter. That's possibly also why they're up there pretty high. So just look around to look for some date. Maybe they've got a blog. Go check out the blog. That should have a date. Look for a copyright in the footer or maybe something in the about page. I'm seeing that this site is mobile friendly. That means that it looks nice on a desktop computer and it looks nice on a mobile device. How do I know that? Just take your web browser and grow it or shrink it and if the site itself also responds to that and grows and shrinks the graphics and the content, most likely it's mobile friendly. If it was not mobile friendly, everything would be really scrunched together or it would have something off the edge of the page. It's mobile friendly. If you visit them on a mobile device, then you'll fully see is it mobile friendly. And the thing that matters about this is that recently Google has started to give more weight to websites that are mobile friendly. If your website is beautifully designed, has great graphics, but is not mobile friendly, that might hurt you a bit. How much? Well, that's part of the trade secrets of Google. But you can rest assured Google and Bing are going to be focusing on mobile friendliness more and more and more. Because raise your hand if you've got a mobile device with you right now. Probably 80 to 99 percent of everyone in this room and this city and this state and this country and this world more and more people are on mobile so the search engines are going to be focusing more on that so I'll write mobile friendly this is not automatic depending on how you created your website you may have the feature of mobile friendliness or you may not software like WordPress to design your website can make this pretty easily. If you made this in Dreamweaver, you can do that as well, but you have to work a little bit more. And other platforms also have mobile friendliness as, as, a, as, a, as an enhancement also. If you're using Wix or Squarespace and so forth, those companies are also focusing on this. So if you made your site yourself a few years ago and you never dealt with adding a mobile friendly feature, you might not have it, and therefore you might be hurting yourself. Usually on the last day of class, I take people as volunteers, and if you want to show your website to the class, I'll talk about it and dissect it in the meanest, nicest way possible, and I'll tell you what you might want to do or not, and uh, help you with that on the last day. But this activity, we're looking at the competitors. We've, re we've searched those keywords, the generic ones, and we've seen what's good, bad, what stands out, what I might do, what I might borrow. I might not have the language of these things yet, but as time goes on and as you read Search Engine Land and other sites, this will make more sense as, you, as we do more lessons and so forth. That's one, one aspect. We'll look at the second. Any questions on this part first? Then we've got the new way. In a clean search engine, search for a long tail keyword for your site. So basically we're searching for the longer word, the whole sentence. Like when I search for what's a good Italian food restaurant nearby, I'm going to think about the longer keyword. But the operative word here also is clean search engine. People oftentimes come to these classes and tell me, I search for my I search for my keywords, I search for my long tail keywords at home, and I search on, and I find myself on page one. But then when I go search on my friend's computer or elsewhere, I'm not anywhere on page one. What's going on? What's going on there is because you're on your own computer and your own computer and web browser remembers your search history, it gives you skewed results. Not because it's trying to mess with you but because the web browser is starting to learn that you like this website, you visit that website, it's making it easier for you to get your work done or to browse websites. It learns about you, 
so the search results are a little more tailored to you. Therefore, we're getting false results from searching on our own computers. And when you search on someone else's computer that they never searched you, then you get a more real results. Question? Would the clearing history of cookies help that? Yeah, let's say you just kept, uh, you kept re reviewing your work and uh, looking at it on uh, Chrome, but you would use Firefox or something to go ahead and uh, keep that clean, keep that browsing history clean. Uh, would that give you a more realistic reading? Well, notice how I said in a clean search engine, footnote number one, and as we go down to footnote number one, that's exactly what you're saying. In a clean search engine, which is one where you have reset your browser, cleared your cookies, gone in incognito mode, or switched to a completely different browser, that helps, definitely. So I've got the note down here. Whatever your web browser is, however you use it, Firefox, Internet Explorer, Safari, somewhere there, there's a spot to clear cookies, clear history, go into private browsing or incognito mode. Those are going to give you much more of a result like a, like a random potential client or, or customer. It's a clean history. So I'm recommending here, if your main browser is Chrome, use Firefox, because then you can clear those cookies out and reset passwords and all of that. I don't want you to, f for your web browser to forget all your history and your bank information and your email login, um, because if you do reset things, you're going to lose all that, you'll have to type it in again. So if you use a different web browser and they're all free to download, use Firefox only for this. Don't log into your bank and everything there. Use your, your normal web browser. Use Internet Explorer. Download Chrome and then use that and reset it and clear the cookies and make it your tool for doing these sorts of clean searches. That way you will get a better result like a potential client. I've got Google Chrome Active up on the browser options over here, these little lines. It used to be a little gear, a little wrench, I think. Now it's these lines. You can go here, and there's going to be options somewhere about uh, clearing the history, clearing your cookies, or using what they call incognito mode. Incognito mode or private browsing, which is that you can not leave a trail um, when you're browsing. That's useful. Not leave a history. Firefox has one too. They all name it a little bit different. You'll have to you'll have to educate yourself a little bit with your particular web browser. Check the options. Firefox calls it new private window. So educate yourself about clearing your cookies, clearing your history, using private mode, and that will help get give you better results. Well, if you use the private mode, does that work the same way? Um, I think, and I have to check on each browser, but I think, depending on the browser, this one might, from this point, not remember anything more. But what you've already previously done might show up, and I could be wrong, I have to look it up, but I feel safest using a web browser just for this task where I clear out the cookies, clear the history, and then turn on private mode, just to be safe, cover all the bases. So I'm not exactly sure of that answer, but I feel safest just doing the nuclear option, the whole thing. So that's what I'm saying here. In a clean search engine, now search for a long tail keyword, a whole sentence, and do the same thing. Evaluate these competitors. Does it have a social media presence or icons? Does it have contact information? Does it have a feature you don't? Is there something you don't like about it? Just any reactions. Build a profile for your competitors so that then you can figure out what you're not doing because something's working for those competitors. Figure out what they're doing right, how we can apply it to our own site better. And then, of course, make a list of 10 simple keywords that define your site. That comes together from what you've written on that company profile or other things. I'm not saying just 10. You could do more than 10, no problem. You want, but I'm saying here a goal. 10 simple keywords. Web design, affordable, Eastlake, okay? And then five that are more specific. Web designers, 
for small businesses. Um, On-call web um, support for restaurant companies. You know, I'm going to write some longer sorts of phrases that a real person would be looking for. You know, even literally a person might be searching for, I need a web designer for my dog walking company. People are going to make those kinds of searches because now you can speak those searches and they're going to ask that kind of question. question. Yes? So when you're, um, you do all this research and you figure out no, they should not. These providers should not place any limits on your site, except for if you read their terms of service, probably something about no hate speech and no illegal products and that sort of thing, but there should be no limitation about your content or the amount of content and the length of your keywords or any of that. They are pretty much, you know, just a platform for you on your site and as, you, as long as you follow their terms of service, like no, no violent threats and so forth, you'll be fine. There's no limits to your content. So by researching your competition, you are seeing what has worked for them. You are defining what sets you apart and what you have to offer in contrast to your competition. You will use your long tail keywords throughout your site in posts and pages and we'll see exactly how as the course goes on. But you will also create content that fits the overall theme of your site. You will become an authority in the field you've targeted. You will create content on a regular basis and you will spread this content throughout the internet. So again, we'll do these things together, but I'm saying we're going to create regular update content on a regular basis. In short, that means blogging. So if your website has not been updated very recently, one way to update your website is to add a blog to it. Once a month, I'm going to post a new blog post. Even better, once a week. Even better, once a day. If you haven't updated your website in a while, a good goal is to update it once a month, specifically with a blog. As luck would have it, I teach a class on blogging where I go into details about all of that. It's uh, Wednesday nights, um, I believe, I have to check my papers here, I believe the class is full though, unfortunately, but it'll be offered again, maybe in a month or two. But blogging is, is very useful and relevant for modern SEO and SEM. This is how you update your site, this is how you put out content to the web. This is how you become an authority because you're writing about all of these things that you that your company is an expert at. And then you're also sharing it throughout the internet via what channels perhaps be before that. Via what channels can you share stuff on the internet? Social media. Social media. Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, YouTube, etc. Pinterest, Snapchat, Ello, Periscope, all of those ones that we've never heard of. And um, that's how then you can uh, start to get more no uh, notoriety, in a good way of course, more uh, fame for your online presence. Question. One of the ways to do it is through WordPress. So if you've got a website that was originally designed in Dreamweaver, no problem. We can add WordPress to it. And then that will be for your blog. WordPress can... Uh, but if your, your website is designed in WordPress... You can still do it. And actually, if your website was designed in WordPress, you basically already have the blog, you just need to use it. So we can add blogging... We can add blogs to our sites pretty easily. So the, the items that I've given you today, your long tail keyword strategy, you're going to need to work on that for yourself, of course. I'm not going to accept this as a homework or anything. This is for yourself. I can look at it. I can review it if, if you'd like. You're going to look at and fill out the uh, company profile, and, and I can 
look it over if you'd like also. Your only kind of homework is next week, bring your login information. You're going to log into your site and you're going to um, make some changes to your site and so forth. We're going to set up the webmaster tools the next time, which is basically we're going to connect your website to Google and to Bing so that your website is found easier. We're going to use various tools and that requires for us to edit your site. So get your password to log in to either edit your, your site or maybe your service provider's login. Those are usually different. Your GoDaddy password is often different from the password you use to log in to edit your site. Get them both or either or for next uh, Friday. And so one, one more quick thing. Um, as soon as you turn off your computers here, whatever you've done gets erased. So if you logged in and forgot to log out, no problem, the computer will log you out when, you, when we turn it off. If you wrote this document and left it on the desktop, it will not be here next time. You need to take it with you, either via email or a USB drive, flash drive. So um, remember to take your work with you. Send me an email for the videos, and we'll do it again next time.